it's Elizabeth and I'm here in my art loft and I showed you the last time the last time we talked I showed you how I was making a texture plate or um, stamp rubber stamp for my sister who lives in Minnesota and uh, I finished it I put you know just little different things at the edge as well as in the center and it's almost the right size to go on a five by seven gel plate but since I can do it the other way I'll just do it the other way as well um, to put paint on this or ink on this you could use an ink pad but the ink pad sometimes um, rolls up on it and I don't want to actually do that this time because if I do that while it's uh, you know doesn't have anything on it then I'll have to go wash it before I show you the paint so I'm going to show you the paint first and then we'll do the ink after the paint and see if it works at all and then rinse it off of course after that I'm going to um, do a little bit of this pretty violet I think I think that'll be a good color for the uh, paper I have it to go on but um, I've just got a roll-off sheet I'm going to put it on the ones I work with are much bigger texture plates or much bigger uh, rubber stamps and I've already put out too much paint there so we'll see how that works but we'll just spread it out with the brayer of course and in this case I am going to um, two ways to do it one way is to spread out your paint and then roll it onto your um, plate and it, with that then you want to have a good amount of of paint on the uh, on the the gel plate oh my brain Okay, so if I want to then print this on a piece of paper, which I have a piece of paper here, I've got one that I've already put some things on. What, you can either turn your plate over to uh, put it on the paper, or you can just turn your paper over and center it however you want on that. And I know I scooted it just a little, so we might get a little bit of scoot showing. And then if you do this, then you'll be able to see the, a nice print from it. And there we have a printed out texture plate. If I were to, let's say that I want to have the whole thing printed, then what I might do is to just roll off, roll a little bit on this side. A little bit more off the plate there. And I know I'm getting it on my table, but it comes off that really well. And you see that I have, let's say that I wanted it over here. So maybe I would, and since that, that edge matches up with the points of the uh, things there, I might match it up or try to match it up where it goes down on the paper next to the point on the paper. And then we'll just give it a good press down and we'll see what we've got. And there we have, I did pretty good at matching up the lines going across. Not perfect, of course. And of course, where they overlapped, it was a different uh pattern so you got kind of a different pattern there but that's kind of a nice roll off piece of paper that you know that's that's just really kind of a uh, well I'm not gonna say garbage but a piece of paper that you wouldn't necessarily I mean you would use for collage or something like that but that's how the, the um, rubber stamp works clean up my desk a little bit the other way to do it is to print from the gel plate and we can just roll this out a little bit more and I might have to put, yeah, it might work. Let's try it with that. And in that case, we just put the plate, the uh, texture plate or your rubber stamp as it is onto the gel plate and press down pretty well. You want to have a nice thin layer on your gel plate to do this. And then when we pick it up, we have, um, we, we have two things, we have a, a square here that we can print on another piece of paper let's say we print it on this one and it might or might not have enough to have picked up enough to be wet enough to print on this but sometimes it will and we've got partial print which is okay and then we also have this one which we can print directly onto a piece of paper or if we want, we can put on more paint of a different color and go from there. I'm going to go ahead and print this to see if it works. And 
And there we have that. I hadn't rolled it out perfectly evenly, and that's why I have the line there. But that's okay for a roll-off print. Doesn't look too bad, does it? I like that flower there. Okay, so if we wanted to put, um, and this is already dry, you can just wash it off with soap and water. Comes right off of there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, scrubbing with your scrub brush. But, um, and we've got a dry brayer now too. So we just roll that off on our, on our roll off print over here. Maybe do that. Um, let's try it again on here one more time with, let's do a green. Greens are fun. <clears throat> And no, you don't have to, and again, I put too much, but that's all right, but we just deal with it. Deal with it. You can either subtract some by rolling off your brayer to your roll off paper and then uh, subtracting more of the ink, but we don't, we're not paint, sorry, paint. But we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna make the green and make sure we get as smooth as we can there. Get that the lines, as many lines as we can out of it. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to take off some with the texture plate or rubber stamp and just really push that down. And let me get another one of these sheets of paper that I want to have some green on. And I think this one looks pretty, pretty good. So in this case, I'm going to take this Move that over here out of the way. Take this off here. And it's still got a lot of paint on it, so I'm going to put that right there in that direction. If I had another brayer here, aha, uh -huh, I do. I can roll this to make it get good adhesion to that uh, piece of paper. And there we have a little bit, see it had green on this edge, so I'm like, well, it'd be kind of nice to have a texture of green on that edge. So we did that. And this is really wet. If I pick that up, it will probably smush a little bit, but that won't be too bad, maybe. Let's try it on this piece of paper. I had the purple on the other end, so we're gonna put it on this end. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, we are. Okay, put that on this end. And we did, we did pick it up. But you don't get as crisp a print if you have too much paint on there so that's what we had was a lot of a lot of paint on it let's roll out what we have here and just a teeny bit more and we'll pick it up one more time we are going to get to the ink don't don't worry about it just give me a second I like to get things the way I want them to be good. Okay, again, I'm going to put my plate down. It is dry again. I'm getting a good amount of pressure to it to try to make sure it picks up as much of the stuff and, and it didn't pick it up as well as I'd hoped. I'll just put this over on this blank piece of paper over here. I don't really care. Just want to not what I wanted there. We'll see what we can get. Usually I wait for it to dry. That didn't turn out so bad. Let's, let's roll that out again. And I think what it's doing is mixing the purple with the green and we're getting a nice brown on there. Now that's about dry enough. That'll be good. Okay, take, pick it up one more time. Still didn't give me what I want. I know, you're probably saying to the camera, what are you trying to do, lady? Well, if I ever do it right, I'll show you. So come on. Oh, now that turned out right. One thing is if you don't clean your plate between colors, sometimes when you have wet 
paint coming off. This is the first one of the two that I did. This is the second one. You can see that it pulled off some of the purple in some of the areas. The purple that is on this uh, plate, on the, on the stamp, it pulled it off along with the wet green. See how that is? And you can get some really interesting prints that way. Okay, one more time. Let's see if we can make that work there. Um, what I'm trying to do here, oh, I might have enough of that. See, we can see it through the other side. You can see the print. And if we clean our brayer off, and I'm just going to roll that on there to clean it off. There's not enough to actually, probably not enough to actually pick up, though we'll try it with this piece of paper. Might get a little bit. If you pick it up with a piece of paper that has paint on it, then you're going to be able to pick up less than if you pick it up with a piece of paper that is uh, doesn't have any paint on it at all because the when it doesn't have any paint on it, yeah, we didn't get much. When it doesn't have any paint on it, it can absorb the paint and um, keep it stuck to it. But here we have, you know, the paint on there with our rubber stamped image in there. And then if we put another paint over the top of it, let's say we use this, this lovely uh, shiny blue, metallic blue, if we can get a little bit out. Then we can, I'm going to spread it a little bit before I actually roll it. Then when we pick it up, we should get the blue down in between the green lines. Second to roll off my brayer. Okay. I think I have a little too much on there. Maybe I have a little too less now, but we'll see. Okay, I'm going to pick it up with a brand new piece of paper. Which I have one over here that I've picked something else up on, so we'll pick this up here. up my blue before I get everything in it. A little bit of water will help. Beautiful. And now we have, there's the image that we have. You can see a little tiny bit of the purple still. You can see the blue showing through. When it's dry, the blue will show a little better because the blue is metallic, so you will see the difference in the metallic and the matte color, which you don't see as much now. But the blue the blue showing through in several places where the paint was thin enough or was enough gone that you could see that. This other one's another print I did at another time. I'm not going to talk about that one. Okay, so now we're going to use some ink on top of our paint and see how that works. Let me see if I can find the paint of the ink I was going to use here. I have some archival brown, archival ink. It doesn't smell as bad as the other. The uh, stays on really smells, but the, the uh, brown, brown ink, I just kind of rub it over the top of the paint and my ink pad might be a little dry. Let's see how that works. Okay, so there we have it. We'll get us another nice clean piece of paper. I'll put that down right there. 
and see, I actually have two pieces here, so let's remove this top layer. And again, you could use your brayer to go over it. Not this one because it's got the blue all over it. But there we have. And that didn't do very much, did it? It did enough that if you were using this, say, for a greeting card, it could be interesting to, you know, cut out a piece of that and use as a background part of your greeting card. Let's put a little more paint on the ink on there. <clears throat> Let me show you what it does if you use this on uh, just the plain rubber itself without any paint underneath of it. With this one, maybe I needed to press harder with my paint pad because, I mean my ink pad, because it seems like it might be a little bit dry. This is one, this is a butterfly I carved. And let's just stamp that over the top of the other paint, uh, the other ink. Is this in screen? I didn't even look. And there we have, so it does print pretty well over the top of that. Uh, with the archival ink, I've used it with some other ink, but I, maybe my ink was too juicy or something, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, sometimes it beads up on this, on this blue rubber surface. Is that sufficiently annoying? try to print it again. Let me use this brayer here to try to get really good uh, adhesion of the paper to the ink. And let's see what we have. It's still not getting great. So maybe just by itself it will work better than with the uh, with the paint on it but you know you're still getting some good stuff you can use uh, these archival inks and other inks on your jelly press jelly press plate thingy and uh, let's do another let's roll some more paint on here and see what we get when we've got the uh, the brown on here from the ink we'll use this yellow come on not too much. That's about how much you should have. And of course, since I didn't clean off my brayer, maybe I should do that. Yep, I'll clean it off just a sec. Okay, it's still got a little bit of blue, but not as much as it had. But you might get a green color because of the, the leftover blue. So just be aware that that can happen. So spread it out. This plate has kind of a divot in the middle of it and it really irritates me. It's really hard to get it totally even. But that looks pretty good. We'll go with that. Let me clean off my brayer over here. when we stamp that into that yellow. And we'll put it on this plain piece of paper here. So we're going to stamp this into the yellow with our ink on it. Ink on top of paint, remember? And we're going to make sure it gets a good adhesion by just using our brayer. I'm pressing down pretty hard. Okay, and we have, it looks like it transferred some of the brown to there, and we do have a ghost print of a yellow over here, so let's just pick that up on a plain piece of paper here. And I think I got it crooked, but that's the way it works. If we, like, if we want to use it for a card or something, you can just simply cut that out. And 
and pick up that bow. Okay, let's see what we have here then. Again, you can give it the old braider to smooth it instead of just your hands if you prefer either way. And there we have it with a little bit of brown in behind it. That's kind of nice though. And then it also has a little bit of the leftover green that had a little, little bit of green on the plate still. And we still have a little bit on the plate that we can make another print of interest from. I like the way this looks right here, this very uh, light, kind of blended, kind of an ombre from the light to the dark uh, brown. And then of course the yellow very crispy around it. That looks pretty cool. So there's lots of different ways that you can use a plate that you cover, cut out of the rubber like that and along with archival paint and or with your gel plate, with your regular paints, your regular uh, just acrylic paints. Um, what color do I like now? Let's use some of this blue that was the metallic blue. more than enough. Not that brayer, that's for using on my clean sheets of paper. Spread this baby out a little bit. I'm going to give it a shot on here taking a little bit more off of there because it feels like there's a little bit too much on the plate. So we're going to print two things now. We're going to print what's on the plate. And I'm going to use a white sheet of paper this time. <clears throat> so I'm going to print what's on the plate here. On the, sorry, on the rubber stamp thing that I've made. Let's see what we get with that. Let's use the brayer. Can't hurt. Don't really press down. And then with the other side, I will print what's on the gel plate. And really press down there as well. And we'll see what we got. Should have left it on there a little bit longer. But we've got a really nice light print over here with the yellow showing through. And over on the, the actual rubber stamp, it's picked up the, a little bit of the brown. You can see in the middle, that's that, not this purpley part, that's the purple from the plate itself. But the brown, the um, light, or the color that is not quite turquoise there, that's the brown archival paint coming through. And this little string of stuff is from where the where the paint was at the edge of one of the pieces and it peeled up and makes sometimes makes little strings. But that one's interesting too. I, I like this. This looks neat. Of course that's a metallic blue so that's why it looks so cool in the first place. Okay, what else to do? Let's put some more stuff on there and take it off. See what we can get. <clears throat> get another piece of white paper here. Ready? In fact, let me see if there's any more on here that can come up. I've got like two or three here. Two. They stick together. And that just picked up the loose bits that were the purple. That were loose bits, but you do have a kind of a ghost print of green from the yellow and the blue that were on there. Okay, so what color do we want to play with? This time we're going to go with a, what color will look cool with that? Okay, we have the metallic, we'll go with that purple again. And that's about the right amount. But you can see on our plate that we've got a lot of green on there still left over from previously, and I almost used the wrong brayer. 
I'll go ahead with this sprayer that I forgot to clean. We'll just get that spread out. Might have a little bit of the metallic blue in it. I'm not going to worry about it. First, I'm going to print it off directly off the rubber stamp thing. Take a little bit more off here. Okay, let's try to smooth that out first. I like it smooth. So whenever I use my plate on there, it will pick it up right. And we'll roll it out here. And we'll pick that up with my lovely white sheet of paper. And it did get some of the purple, but then it also did a lot of picking up of the old stuff. And right here, this one held on to it pretty, pretty much. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to use this to impress into here. This The brayer helps to push it down really nicely and make sure there are no bubbles between the the stamp and the, the gel plate and that's a beautiful um, thing there that we got let's see if we've got anything here that'll come up except it did transfer a few things to there from that from the plate since we haven't cleaned it yet Not much on there because it was rather dry on the on the plate here. And now if we do our, if we made it totally dry and we did our next color, let's do, um, let's do this green again. See if we get mud or if we can get some nice contrast in the green, the green versus, this is a different green. Nope, that's the same green, Never mind. A little bit here that we need to pick up. See that little bit that keeps coming up? It's a bit of dried paint. We don't want that on there. And we use this to pick up the rest of the paint that's on there. Leave the leftovers onto our plate. And we have to get another piece of paper out. Come on. One. Okay, so this should come up fine. And that's probably going to dry while I'm doing this. But that's okay. You can always get that later. Or wash it off. I did make each of the blocks separately different from each of the other ones, unlike the other, the larger plates that I do, I usually have like five or six or eight blocks that are all the same. Of course, they're spaced out so you don't really notice them. And here we have a lovely print of the purple and the green. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and comment and share and leave me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like it. What the heck? Give me what you tell me what you think. Give me feedback. It's always good. Have a great day. And there was nothing to pick up from there. Thanks for watching. Bye.